All right, let's move on to Taylor Lorenz and uh, talk about the journos and the bannings and free speech and <laughs> doxing and what does it all matter? So you guys got an initial take there from Ryan and Emily on Friday, but let's pick up where things really left off yesterday. Journalist Taylor Lorenz, a guest friend of the show, let's put it up there <laughs> on the screen, has been banned from Twitter, although she's been unbanned since then. So she writes here in her Substack about how uh, basically with no notice really whatsoever, she was suspended from Twitter after asking Elon for comment, which we'll get to in a little bit. She, I do also love the way that she gets upset about her, uh, her banning. She says, I've been on Twitter since 2010. Never once in my 13 year career have I received a single terms of service community guidelines violation for my personal account or any account that I've ever run. Twitter has served as an essential real time news source and played a crucial role for the journalism world. But the arbitrary suspensions you report on him should worry about people who value journalism and free expression, something of course she cares quite a lot about. Uh, she actually reacted to her banning and broke the news on her personal TikTok. So we will let the lady say it in her own words. Lives a TikTok. I've actually never wished suspension on other people. Let's not, let's not get that twisted, guys. Um, I have always, as I said earlier, um, I've always actually advocated for a Discord-like approach to Twitter. So I think it should be up to the users to determine what experience they want on Twitter. I think people, if they want the full craziness of Twitter and they don't care and they're like, you know what, give me all the hate on the world, like I don't care what people say, go for it. Have that version of Twitter, right? However, if you just want like a small version of Twitter, you just want to post to like your, your mutuals, um, you want a locked account, you want to like segment your audience, you know, whatever, you should have that, you know? There, it's crazy that there's no way um, to do that. And no, uh, I did not ask Twitter to ban you, Haya. I did not. I reported on your account. Um, it's up to Twitter what they want to do. As you know, you got seven strikes. Um, which is actually preferential treatment because most people are banned. I think three to five strikes is the ban. So um, Lips of TikTok actually enjoyed special treatment from Twitter, which is something that we um, found out from the Twitter files, which I thought was very interesting. The person she was responding to was actually the Libs of TikTok account that was trolling her, being like, how does it feel to get suspended after you tried to get me suspended? For, finally, though, and I do think this is important, as loath as I am to defend this woman, let's put this up there on the screen. Uh, our last tweet was, hi, Elon, uh, I've sent you a couple of emails. We've learned some information we'd like to share and discuss with you. We're taking this very seriously and want to ensure this is pursued in the right way. Thank you. This was uh, some story that they're probably about to publish over there. I'm sure it's some, you know, overwrought, uh, like, opinion journalist piece. That said, you know, you shouldn't just be banning accounts for no prop, uh, no reason. E Eric Weinstein, to his credit, also spoke out. Let's put this up there on the screen, soliciting an Elon reply. He says, you know that glee, positively elated childlike that the woke experience when folks who they claim to be horrible are canceled or banned? You've seen that? Oddly, I'm not having that right now. In fact, I'm getting a bit concerned. To which Elon then replied, this is a temporary suspension due to a prior doxing action by this account. It will be lifted shortly. So what he's referring to is... Um, a previous uh, incident of which the details, there's an ongoing lawsuit out there that you can go and read where a Instagram, or sorry, a TikTok kind of social media influencer manager was based, in my view, like unfairly smeared and her personal details were published by Taylor Lorenz after she had specifically told Taylor, I don't want this to be out there. However, this happened, I think almost two years ago now at this point. So yeah. she had pointed that out and Elon had replied saying, wow, this is crazy. And I guess banned her for doc somebody two years ago. Now, I don't agree with the doc, but the problem is, is that clearly he saw it and just decided to ban it with any, without any consistency, without any transparency. This comes now on the heels of the whole private jet conversation, which I'm sure many people are us tuned. Let's just put this out there right now. Let's put aside whether the account itself should be free speech or not. I would only say he himself already said that it was free speech because he literally tweeted, I will not ban the account as a result of my free speech absolutism. All right, so let's put that aside. Second though, uh, whether you even agree that the account itself should be banned, the Elon Jet account, banning journalists who were not even really linking to the account per right. se, who were covering the story right. of the ban is ludicrous. 
And especially when you combine that with the previous block where they were talking about banning Mastodon accounts and more, this is like banning the New York Post for the Hunter Biden laptop story. You are picking and choosing what links, publishers, stories, et cetera, which get to be banned on the platform or not. If it arises to the editorial standards of the New York Post, the New York Times, of breaking points of uh, Matt Taibbi or Glenn Greenwald Substack, for us to cover the Elon Jet account, who are you to say whether that coverage of that or not falls within the bounds of your service, especially whenever you abide by a quote, free speech absolutist position. So that's the way I think of squaring it, even if you don't like the Elon Jet account. Even if you think it's wrong or it's doxing or whatever, which I would have heavily dispute given FAA and uh, court rules and even, even the way that Jack Sweeney, the guy who runs that account, puts it all together, it is all publicly available information of which, yes, he has used a sophisticated way to put it together. But I mean, look, uh, it, the allegation is that a foreign government could use the account. Any foreign government that has a, a precision guided munitions is capable of doing exactly what Jack Sweeney did. Yes. All right. Indeed. So let's also put that uh, in there as well. Well, Crystal, go yes, ahead. Indeed. I mean, there are two pieces here. Number one, are you living up to your pledge to run Twitter as a free speech absolutist platform? I mean, originally he, originally he said any speech which is which is legal is allowed on Twitter. And as you point out, Sagar explicitly said that this account mm -hmm. would be allowed. I mean, it's clearly the ship has long ago sailed on this being a free speech absolutist platform by a variety of moves that he's made from banning this account, banning journalists, banning um, keeping Alex Jones banned, banning Kanye temporarily. I mean, clearly that is not the way that he is running Twitter. That's number one. So given that, okay, that ship has already sailed, there's another question of, okay, well, can you apply whatever your actual rules are in terms of service in a fair and consistent way? And what has been abundantly clear to that is the answer is absolutely not. I mean, the Taylor Lorenz thing is a perfect example, right? She asked you for comment on a story. You got some tweet about like, hey, she did something in the past I didn't like. And then on a whim, you decide to reach back two years into the past to temporarily suspend her based on new terms of service that you just wrote mm -hmm. in order to apply to a specific situation related to you that you didn't like. I mean, this is classic, like based on his whims, based on his proclivities, based on his opinions. He even said with the Kanye West thing, like, well, the swastika, him tweeting a swastika incited me to violence. So again, it's his standard versus any sort of consistent terms of service judicial standard. I mean, I would, I would prefer that you actually have a platform that truly abides by the First Amendment and follows judicial precedent there. That's going to be messy and difficult. None of that is going to be easy. There are gray areas. It's challenging. I would prefer that. But if that is off the table, which I have little hope that we're ever going to see that, then at least you would want terms of service, which are fairly and consistently applied. And clearly what you see here is that that is not the case. That's why Eric Weinstein is reacting in this way. You also had uh, Barry Weiss, who I want to give credit to as well. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. You know, Barry has gotten a lot of attention, a lot of followers, a lot of subscriptions for her new outlet based on her relationship with Elon and posting Twitter files. Now, I don't want to say that's like the only thing Barry's known for. Mm -hmm. She's built up her following on her own before this, but this was clearly a boon for her. And she was willing to be critical of what Elon is doing here. Um, she says the old regime at Twitter governed by its own whims and biases. It sure looks like the new regime has the same problem. I oppose it in both cases. And I think those journalists who are reporting on a story of public importance should be reinstated. Um, Elon clearly not happy about that. He's going back and forth with her, trying to get her to respond, saying, what should the consequences of doxing someone's real time exact location be? By the way, no one was doing that. And also he says, Barry, this is a real question not rhetorical. What is your opinion? Rather than rigorously pursuing truth, you are virtual, virtue signaling to show that you are good in the eyes of media elite to keep one foot in both worlds. And I just want to say again, Barry Weiss, who I have, you know, other, uh, other disagreements with, she is the one being consistent here. 
I mean, she is the one. I have no doubt that this was uh, difficult for her because now very likely she won't get to publish, mm -hmm. publish the next Twitter file. She just launched this new outlet. I'm sure some of the people who subscribed are Elon fans and are on his side in, in his. So there was a real sort of immediate business cost to coming out against Elon versus what he's saying there that this was all, you know, to her benefit career wise. Yeah, it actually really drives me crazy, these types of responses. I, I got some of the same thing when I also tweeted my opposition to the policy. And it's one of those things where like, well, come on, you know better. I'm like, or maybe I just think differently than you. Uh, maybe, you know, I, this is something I really wanted a free speech platform. It's something I really desired. I thought it could have set an amazing precedent for the possible future of social media. And instead, basically since day one, it's been put to the side. And so that's disappointing for some of the people who support and like that policy. And whenever somebody violates it, even if they are like somewhat ideologically aligned on other areas, why is it so bad to just say what you think? Like the level of tribalism all that has uh, occurred here is ridiculous and he is the one who changed his position mm -hmm. he said i won't ban the account and now he's claiming that the account itself led to the attack on his son by the way there's actually not a lot of evidence to show that uh there is no police report no evidence to show that this was the exact way that the account that the attack itself happened and on top of that i even said here before nobody forces you to fly private it's not like your house. It's not like a permanent abode. There are many ways that you can go about uh, flying in a way that is secret. You could charter a jet, you could fly commercial. Also, it wasn't even him who was on the plane. So the other point is, is you know, they, they call it, quote, assassination coordinates. As I have said, the only pe person entity capable of doing that would be a nation state, uh, which I'm pretty damn sure doesn't need the Elon jet tracker to find out where yeah. Elon is in their airspace. Plus, so they just want your money. They just want you to like build a Tesla factory. I'm just like, what are Whatever. you doing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're exactly. Not to murder you. Yeah, first of all, yeah. Second, <laughs> they're not trying to murder you. Yeah, all they're really trying to do is get you it's to invest in their country. That's what they want. Yeah. Um, yeah, that it, listen, guys. Sagar and I, you yeah. can go back and look at the trailer. Yeah, watch it. I def we defended Kanye West posting a swastika, yeah. okay? We've fun. defended Nicole Hannah-Jones, who yeah. we have mm -hmm. ideological strong. I we just in this segment defended Taylor Lorenz, okay? I have defended so many people on the right that I do not like, that I do not care for, that I think are odious, deplorable, whatever, because I believe in free speech. And so if you hold that principle, there is no way you can look at the moves that Elon has made and be like, this is free speech. There's just no way you can do it. And so, yeah, actually, you know, you said you voted yes on yeah. the uh, poll for Elon to stay as, uh, uh, to, to go. Uh, you wanted him to go as mm -hmm. head of Twitter. I also voted yes that I wanted him to go as head of Twitter. But I had to say I was a little reluctant about it because I've sort of enjoyed the number of masks that have been pulled off mm -hmm. by this whole thing. I mean, you have, um, first of all, you do have a lot of liberals like Taylor Lorenz who've been in favor of censorship and now are getting a taste of like, oh, maybe handing a whole bunch of power to these social media oligarchs in you know collaboration with the deep state, maybe this doesn't always work out the way that I thought. Now, do I think these people are actually gonna learn the lesson? No, I don't think that they're gonna learn anything at all because they think you know their suspensions are different than other suspensions, whatever. But I have enjoyed that. Um, I have enjoyed seeing who are the hypocrites on the right who claim to be free speech absolutists and they claim to be against censorship. And then the minute it's applied to their ideological adversaries, they're either silent or they're outright defending it. And I also have appreciated seeing who does have a shred of a principle and a shred of integrity to actually stand with the things that they have said in the past. I've enjoyed all of that. I've enjoyed the mask off of what it, you know, this is, I said this before, in some ways, Elon Musk, it's equivalent to like when Trump was president. Mm -hmm. He took the already corrupt regime and he just like pulled the mask off and went even further. So it was just like undeniable the way that Washington works. And it's kind of like that with Elon. I mean, when you have, whether it's Zuckerberg or Elon or Bill Gates or uh, Jack Dorsey or whoever it is, when you have one person or a small group of people in charge of these outlets, they have way more power than they should. And they can make capricious decisions based on a whim that have major impacts on people's lives, major impacts on our sort of democratic infrastructure. And I have appreciated, in a way, having that all really revealed in an undeniable way. That being said, I think we've all you know, learn yeah, what there is to know. learn from this experience, and it's time to move forward. <laughs> yeah, what's the Leninist <laughs> phrase? It's like heighten the contradiction. Yeah, 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 uh, that's yeah, it, that's yeah. it. Anyway.
Great phrase. Uh, I guess you can always look to the Bolsheviks for good stuff. Indeed. All right, let's go to the next one uh, and put it up there on the screen as well because this is important. He says, should I unsuspend the accounts who dox my exact real, by the way, that's not what happened, uh, exact location in real time because he's talking about the uh, he's talking about the journalists themselves. 43% voted yes, they should be uh, posted now. If anyone posted the real time addresses of New York Times reporters, he said the FBI would be investigating. That is actually true. Uh, he then posted a second account saying, should I uns unsuspend all of these accounts and the unanimous answer there nearly was yes so there's there we go that's where we stand kind of right now it's so and funny that he was like ah, oh, there was too many odd let me redo it and then yeah. he still got the right. opposite of the and result put this he wanted. up there on the screen it's not just barry weiss and others who uh spoke out against it ben shapiro did as well he actually quoted something that i said which i thought found humorous uh glenn greenwald as well he said quote even if it's quote doxing this ban seems arbitrary and excessive so that's one of those where you can see that many actual people were very principled in this matter in their response to what was happening. And the only one who really was Elon who went back on his word. I've even said, look, I can sympathize with a father whose kid was attacked and it's probably a scary situation, but the whole point is it shouldn't be in your hands and based upon your emotions that you get to decide my user experience on a platform, which according to you is critical to the town square and public discourse. Yes, indeed. Right. I think that's all well said. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add stuff staff to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.